This is Wobbly Wallaby. Today I'll be covering 4 farming spots that early and mid game Dorums can farm in. Which one will give you the most zenny? Stay tuned. If you had accelerated your character as part of ROM 2.0 as a Dorum, you can follow the first part of the video where we farm kobolds on the first day. The link to this video is in the description. Starting from day 2, you can use this video. I'll be showing two free to play Dorums in this video. The first is the Accelerated Dorum, and the second one is one I've had before ROM 2.0 was released and had enough gear to be considered mid game. My Accelerated Dorum is Growth Index 13, as I've been focusing on other accounts. But even at a low growth index, you can still do a ton of damage. I will briefly go over the skills on my Accelerated Dorum. I'm using the default skill allocation given to me. For an in depth guide into Dorum, you can check out my Dorum guide. A link to the video will be in the description. Here are my Witch skills. Here are my Spiritualist skills. Here are my Summoner skills. Here are my Spirit Summoner skills. For Spirit Whisper, try to max out Concentric Life as soon as possible for a chance to deal extra damage. I will cover auto attack skills at the farming sections. Next is Acer Monument. If you don't have enough contribution for Acer, that is fine. From day 2, Savage Soul and Lunatic Ground Pound are strong enough without needing anything from the Acer Monument. As you get contribution and Acer Monument vouchers, prioritize unlocking all the Lunatic Gunner nodes. That will give you extra farming potential. However, the damage is only 45% of your Lunatic Ground Pound, so you need to hit hard to one-shot things. After that, prioritize the Lunatic Ground Pound effect and Savage Soul effect nodes. Soul Strike Penetration, HP Boosting nodes, and Attack nodes are good after. Next is Equipment. The gear you get by default as an Accelerated Dorm are great, especially since they have sockets in them. The cheap stuff that you can get is Rosa Bracelet for 25% Ignore Defense, Ancient Cape for 15% Ignore Defense. The Ferris card for your boots as it gives you 10% more HP. And the Peko Peko card since it gives you 10% more HP as well. For Mouth, Abyss Whisper is a good alternative. I'm using Key of the Stars which only Endless Love servers will get. For Tail, I just chose the cheap Striped Cat Tail for more vitality. For Progression, I would recommend you save up for the plus 10 fine pink fox grass as that will give you a huge boost in damage. Then get a socket of go beans and tear it up. Followed by 2 plus 8 survivor rings. For back and tail, try to roll for something good in the gacha machine. For back, if you can't get anything good, craft the baby owl for penetration percentage. For tail, if you can't get anything good, craft the ice ridge sculpture for ignore defense percentage. Next is advanced ruins. Savage Soul and Meow Hunter are great if you can get them. I didn't unlock the advanced rune system on my accelerated dorm, so these advanced runes aren't mandatory. I'll show you my adventure handbook for both my characters, so you can see there's not a ton of hidden damage in here. Here's my accelerated dorm's handbook. Here's my mid-game dorm's handbook. Now let's look at the farming spots. For our farming, we're starting the day with 150 minutes of combat time, then we're listening to 30 minutes of music. We aren't using premium, and we're running our character until it hits 240 combat time. We'll be covering some pretty high traffic and competitive spots. I highly recommend you cook some 1 star foods and eat them all so you get SP discharge. Then you'll never need to play dead and lose your spot. First is Glasstown Culverts. Here are the stats I had used. I'd kept some points unallocated to be closer to new players. The extra points should be going into Vitality. Here's my starting Zenny and the materials in my bag. My auto attack skills will be Lunatic Ground Pound, Savage Soul, Play Dead, and Lunatic Gunner. I purposely didn't put in Soul Beat or Shrimp Swamp because I wanted to deal as much damage as possible each time I cast a skill. You can put these if you want if you need more damage. When I first start farming, I can see my Lunatic Ground Pound and Savage Soul do just fine, but my Lunatic Gunner doesn't one-shot, so I eat a Dex B and Vitality B meal. Once I'm sure everything is doing well, I'm ready to leave it on auto. 
This spot is quite insane because you're hitting so many things at once. You want to stay alert in above this spot so you can hit all the creatures within your screen. Here is this optimal spot on the map. The only downside of this map is how popular it is. You may need to channel change a few times. During this run, someone might also steal your spot too. Next, I show my starting combat time. I did start at 0, but I wanted to make sure I started attacking so no one would steal my spot. We farm until 240 combat time, and quickly go through our bag and zenny. Here are our results. I get 1.7 million raw zenny, and also some sellable materials as well. The raw zenny at Glass Tom Culverts is really good, so you can stay here until level 140. However, if you want to gain levels, you'll need to get something that's closer to your level. Next, we look at Harpies. Harpies are weak to earth converters, but you can also use the weapon card Mandragora Flower to deal extra damage to them. Unlike some other classes, Dorms can start one-shotting them very easily. This is my favorite spot in Border Checkpoint. This is the optimal spot, so make sure you have SP Discharge from eating foods. Here's our starting zenny and the materials in our bag. We also show that we start at 0 combat time, with 30 minutes of music. Our auto attack is Play Dead, Savage Soul, and Lunatic Ground Pound. No Lunatic Gunner is used here, because I can't one-shot Harpies right now with it. If the Harpies hit you, you'll be put into his stun for a few seconds. Here are the stats I used against Harpies. We farm until 240 combat time, and quickly go through our bag and zenny. Here are our results. The raw zenny is at 1.3 million. Unfortunately, harpy feathers are super hard to sell, so harpies are mostly just for raw zenny. You know it's good if you want to level up your character from around level 120 to 130, but you still want some decent raw zenny. Next, we move on to Plains of Ida with my dorm with better gear. We show we start at 1 combat time with 30 minutes of music. I'd accidentally hit something on the way to this spot. Make sure you use a fire converter as both staples and man-eating grass are earth. Use the Menblad card too for extra damage to earth monsters. If you still have problems one-shotting them, you can also buy the Kaho accessory card to deal more damage. Here's our starting zenny and the materials in our bag. This is my favorite spots in Plains of Ida. This is the optimal spot. Here are my character stats. I am using a Dex B and Vitality B meal. For auto attack, I use Play Dead, Savage Soul, Lunatic Ground Pound, and Shrimp Swamp. My character is too weak to use Lunatic Gunner to one-shot things, so I don't use it here. We farm until 240 combat time, and here's my ending zenny, and here's the materials in my bag. And here's our overall results. I get 1.3 million raw zenny and Ice Crystal Frost. Ice Crystal Frost does sell better than Harpy Feathers, but it's still pretty hard to sell. Plains of Ida is good if you want to level up your character from level 140 and beyond. After Plains of Ida, it becomes more and more difficult. Beyond this, I found maps just don't have quick spawn monsters that are clumped close together like this. Next is Homunculus Lab B1F. Here are my stats for my character. Here's my starting zenny and materials in my bag. For my face, I'm using the hockey mask, and in my weapon, I'm using two hydra cards. There are a lot of demi humans in this area. If you have enough damage, you can attack everything, but unfortunately, my character isn't there yet, so I only target dark merchants, which are weak to fire. Sometimes I hit other monsters with AoE, which is why I get things like semiconductors. Some people recommend this spot, but I think it's only good if you can hit everything. You have to be quite strong to do so. You have to be even stronger if you want to use Lunatic Gunner as well. After 240 combat time, here's my raw zenny and the material that drops in my bag. Let's look at the overall results. The raw zenny here is low due to my character being weak. However, Semiconductor and Iron Ore are very sellable. 
In a future video, we'll continue to try to improve our farming by getting our dorm stronger. We'll also try to use Lunatic Gunner as much as possible to one-shot things as well. I hope this guide helped you see how much sand you can earn in a few spots for early to mid-game dorms. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, and subscribe.